What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this really cool, realistic watercolor painting effect in Photoshop. We post new videos and resources every week, so make sure you hit subscribe and follow us on social media using the links in the description. Also check out newlayer.com and sign up for the email list to get special offers that are only available for email subscribers. Let's get started. So here's the image that we're going to be working with. And before I get into what all these layers in this template are doing, I just want to show you the before and the after. So we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to open my files folder and this has photos, textures, and a PSD template for this entire project. If you're a new layer member, you can download all these project files at newlayer.com. And most importantly, your support will help us create more tutorials every week. So I'm going to go into my photos folder and there's a few images in here that I've downloaded from unsplash.com or pixabay.com and I'm going to use these to go through the tutorial and show you some before and afters at the end. So first I'm going to drag our alpine image in and the first thing that I want to do is make sure that it's the right size. So I'm going to go up to image, image size and set the width to about 1920 pixels and hit OK. All the settings that we're going to use in this tutorial are based on an image that's around this size. So if yours is a lot bigger or smaller, you may have to make some customizations. Next, we're going to right click the background layer and choose convert to smart object. So first I'm going to come up and click filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and set the radius to two pixels and hit okay. Next, I'm going to come up and click filter, stylize, diffuse, and I'm going to set the mode to anisotropic and hit OK. I'm going to repeat the diffuse filter three more times. So you can either come up and click filter, stylize, diffuse, and hit OK three more times. Or you'll notice up here that you have a shortcut and you can just press Alt, Control, and F. So I'm just going to click that to apply it one more time and hit OK. And then I'll do it two more times. So that's a total of four diffuse filters. Next, I'm going to come up and click Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. And I'm going to set the amount to about 400%, the radius to just four pixels, reduce noise to 99%, and I'm going to change Remove from Motion Blur to Lens Blur. So you can already see in the preview window that it's giving us a really nice artistic look. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. Lastly, I'll click Filter, Blur, Surface Blur, and set the radius to 10 pixels and the threshold to 5, and hit OK. So if I zoom in, you can see already that these filters are making our image look really nice. But there's a few more steps we can take to take this to the next level. So I'm going to minimize all these filters, and I'm going to go down and create a new solid color fill layer. And I'm going to set the color to CCCAC6. Then I'll move that color fill beneath our image. So what that solid color fill layer is going to do is simulate a canvas color behind our image. And you'll see what it looks like when we get a little farther. Next, I'm going to select our image layer and I'm going to hold control and click the layer mask icon. And that's going to create a vector mask instead of a layer mask. Then I'll come over to my rectangle tool and I'm going to click on the canvas and draw a rectangle that's the same size as the canvas. So in our case, that's 1920 by 1280. And I'm going to drag it in place so it covers the entire image. Next, I'll come over to our Direct Selection tool and make sure that I have my vector shape selected. And I'll press Control X to cut it and click on my vector mask and Control V to paste it. Now, right now, it's not doing anything. But if you come up to the masks icon under the properties panel, I'm going to set the density of this mask to 35 and the feather to 20%. So if I deselect all that, you can see the edge of my image is just a little faded and you can see it better if I right click and disable and enable that vector mask. So that's showing through our solid color fill layer just a little bit. Next, I want to add some texture. So I'm going to make sure my image layer is selected and I'm going to go into my textures folder and for this I'm going to use texture 3 and I'll drag it in and hit enter and you can see this is a watercolor paper texture so when we apply it to our image it's going to make it look like it's painted on something real so I'm going to come over to the blend mode and change it to overlay and then in the fill I'm going to change that to 75 percent 
Now, some people use opacity instead of fill, but I find for overlay and color burn and some of the other blend modes that it looks a lot better to use the fill rather than the opacity. So if I turn that on and off, you can see that it adds texture to our image and makes it look like it's painted on a real surface. Next, I'm gonna add a vibrance adjustment layer and I'm gonna set the vibrance to 20 and the saturation to 20. And that just boosts the color in our image and just gives it a more colorful look. Now, one of the tricks that painters use is adding blue or purple to the shadows of their paintings, which simulates a white balance shift between the parts that are getting hit by light and those that are in shadow. And that makes paintings more realistic. So we're gonna simulate that by adding a color balance adjustment layer. And you wanna make sure preserve luminosity is checked and under tone, choose shadows. And we're gonna set the cyan red slider to negative 20 and the yellow blue slider to 35. Now this makes our image a little dark, so I'm gonna change the blend mode for that color balance layer from normal to color. And if I turn that on and off, you can see that it adds some blue to the shadows in our image. So that's it, if I zoom in, you can see that we have a really realistic, nice painted effect. So I'll go back into the template file and show you some of the special things in here that make this effect really useful. Now, I know a lot of you are probably used to downloading actions, but smart object templates are so much faster and easier. Instead of loading actions, then playing them one at a time and waiting for the results, then trying the next one and the next one over and over, you can simply copy and paste your image in and turn layers on and off to see all the different looks. So if you're not familiar with that, let me show you. Now, I've organized and grouped everything in the layers panel, so if I open the styles group, you'll see that I have a few different styles of the same image. And all of these are, are different settings for each of the filters that we used to make them more abstract or more detailed. So I'll turn off style three and two, and you can see that style one is a little more faded and has less detail. And then if I turn on style two, a little more detail comes in, and style three has the most detail. If I go into the texture overlays, all I have to do is turn each texture on and off, and you can see that it adds a different type of texture to the image. So texture one is art paper, texture two is a canvas, and texture three is watercolor paper. Under effects are those adjustment layers that we created, and you can just adjust these or turn them on and off if you don't like them. Now the most important part of smart object templates is how easy it is to edit them. So you'll see this layer called double click thumbnail to edit. So I'm gonna do just that and double click the thumbnail, and you'll see that it opens our original image in a new document. So I'm gonna come down to one of my other photos and I'm gonna drag that in and hit enter. And then I'll close that document and when it asks me if I wanna save, I'll hit yes. Now it has to update all of those filters that we previously applied, so it'll take a minute. But then you can see as soon as it's done, it applies everything that we previously did to our new image. So again, I can come into the styles and turn each one on or off to get different looks. And again, you can double click the thumbnail and load whatever image you want. So you just save this as a PSD file and it makes it super easy to change out the image and use it for all kinds of different purposes. So thanks for watching and let me see what you make in the comments. I love seeing the stuff that you guys create using our tutorials. That's it for today guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Also leave a comment below and let me know what you wanna learn next. We create content based directly on your feedback so it's really helpful. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.